Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another new entry here. This one actually coming from the Random Cryptid Generator website that I have saved as a favorite. As you see from the title, it basically just spits out a name of a cryptid. And if it's something I haven't talked about, then I feature it here within this playlist. Such is the case with this creature here, who is actually a regular animal animal just supersized and as you'll see a little bit later on from a description it's been described as being on steroids so when I was reading this information I definitely wanted to share it here because this is absolutely at least to me a very frightening creature I mean the real life animals that these cre that this creature is based on is already frightening enough but imagine running into this out there in the remote wilderness you pretty much have no chance associated with it. But you're looking at a picture of it here. It has a very unique name too. It's known as the Wahila. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the information associated with this cryptid. Those of you that are at a local level on uh, some of the places that I'm about to mention in a minute, let me know too if you have some local stories associated with it. So what is this Wahila? Well, it also has another very unique name. It's known as the Saber Wolf. And as you can tell by that name, it's essentially a wolf. But unlike other wolves, it is a much larger wolf. In fact, it is considered larger and more heavily built than your average wolf. I think wolves themselves are beautiful animals to look at, but from far away, like I've seen them like at the zoo and so on. But something like this out there in the wilderness, no way, absolutely no chance. This is because this creature here is a wolf, but again, it's supersized. In fact, to give you an idea of essentially how big it is, it has a larger set of feet, it has a longer fur as well, it has a wider head. Overall, again, it is just bigger than your average wolf. For example, witnesses that have seen it describe it as being just like your average wolf, just larger, and at the shoulder at least, it reaches three and a half feet to four feet in height. That's incredible. Imagine that. You're almost at the level of, let's say, an adult, and in this case, you're just barely reaching its shoulder. And so here you have this creature with, again, having those supersized portions. Its legs are also much larger. But interestingly enough, they're shorter on the hind legs than on the front legs. And either way, though, it does have a very wide stance as well, along with some very large toes, too. It's basically built to be able to do all the apex hunting that it has within its vicinity and be able to do it with great ease as great hunters as wolves are just regular wolves imagine something like this within that territory where you find it in terms of that territory is this you have to go either to alaska and other type of northwest territories in order to find its location there but it seems like it's something that you don't necessarily want to run into per se but at least in those those areas, this creature, this Wahila, has been there for so long that it's become part of the local lore. In fact, here's some more information associated with that. There's a location there called Nahani, otherwise known as the Headless Valley, and there Native Americans have stated that it is a very old creature, has been there for who knows how long, hundreds if not thousands of years, that it has become part of their lore. So much sense that in this case, the Headless Valley is not just a regular name, it's because the creature apparently hunts people there, and when it does, it uses its power powerful jaws to rip the person's head right off. What a horrible way to go. Here you have this creature chasing you with relative ease, and then all of a sudden it's on top of you. Those giant jaws grab your head, and then it's bye-bye. All of a sudden, you're looking at yourself from who knows how many far feet away, and your head has been ripped off at that point. In fact, there was a guy who was visiting that location as well, an American mechanic by the name of Frank Graves. He's the one that stated that he saw this creature, and then when he saw it, he because of its build, because of its size, he described it as a quote-unquote wolf on steroids. Uh, so yeah, it again, gives you an idea on the size of it. Other native legends or Native American legends state that this is a creature that has been there so long 
song. It's actually attributed to an evil spirit. Apparently, something was living there for who knows how long, something with supernatural powers. And then somewhere along the way, it decided to become this wolf. And then because of that, it utilized the physical strengths and, of course, the attributes of a wolf to be able to then kill people. And that's where it started removing their heads. And so the impression I got from these Native American legends is that they treat this creature with awe. Like, in other words, it's respect, it's fear, it's being able to know that this is a creature that is inherently dangerous and it happens to have this evil spirit associated with it. And that's why they in turn treat it with such closest thing I think of is reverence. Like they, they want to make sure they're not within its vicinity or doing anything to uh, make it mad and so on. But otherwise, it's been also identified as this. It's been theorized to uh, instead of not being, let's say, a supernatural creature, something that inherits an evil spirit. Instead, it could be something from the long lost days, the prehistoric days. It could be something associated with the carnivores of the Miocene and Oligocene. Uh, type creatures. And then also it could just be a modified version of a prehistoric hyena. Imagine that. Imagine like this and being a long lost link to the common day hyena. Or it could just be a 100% completely new animal. Just something again that hasn't necessarily been identified because of its rarity, but it's out there. It's out there in the world. It's a new species of canine. And so because of its rarity, there's really nothing to link it to today. And so it just remains a one-off of sorts. But that's pretty much it. That's all the information associated with this supersized wolf, again, called the Wahila, otherwise known as the saber wolf. And again, it's located there in the Alaska Northwest Territories. Those of you that live in those areas, particularly those of you that happen to be maybe Native American or have heard some other information associated with the Native American legends, let me know. Post it in the comments below. It'd be interesting to see if this is truly a creature that has um, a big presence there or if it's something more rare along the lines. It could definitely stand out because I forgot to mention this. The other thing that you'll know you're within the vicinity of Wahila or you see it from afar is it has pure white fur. It's supposed to be just absolutely immaculate looking. Makes it perfect, in other words, for the environment too. With all that snow surrounding that location, imagine something like this with its pure white fur. Basically, you would just see its eyes. And then at that point, it's too little, too late. So it has the perfect camouflage to be able to, again, be the apex predator associated with that location. And the idea that it's coming from an area called the Headless Valley, again, gives you an idea essentially of the power that this creature has. All right, everybody. But let me know in the comments below. All right, everybody. Take care. Bye.